What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video. Just got back from Austin, Texas, and I was shocked. I was shocked at something. I happened to train with the world's strongest powerlifter twice, Jesus Oliveras, we trained twice. I was there on that day when Jesus squatted 950 pounds, basically, for two repetitions. And his brother, shout out Pablo, who's also insanely strong, squatted damn near 900 pounds. I also trained with fellow world champion, Jess Bittner. Now, there's one very important detail that I observed while I was training with them, in particular with Jesus, his brother, and Michael Davis, another world champion caliber athlete that I think would shock most of you. And it's something that you're probably not incorporating into your own training that might be holding back some gains. This is not me being hyperbolic. This is me just simply telling it like it is. The big thing I wanna talk about is quality of training as opposed to the difficulty of said training. I think too many people will try and overemphasize how difficult a session was rather than if it was effective or not. And the way with which we can evaluate this would be several different ways. But one of the principal ways that I noted when I was observing the brothers train was the quality of their warm-up sets, the speed with which they executed them. So there is a high level of detail and intention behind every single set. Take a guess. How long does it take you from the time you warm up to when you execute said top set? If you're like a lot of strength inclined athletes, it probably takes you a good amount of time. This might shock you, but for Jesus to warm up from bar to 950 pounds, and keep in mind, he had to do eight or nine, because he did a plate, two plates, three plates, four plates, five plates, six plates, seven plates, you're getting an idea, all the way to 950 pounds. It only took him 40 minutes from touching the bar cold, the empty bar after he did five minutes of warming up on the treadmill, to hit his top set, which means every single set in between, the warm sets, he needed to be focused there was a clear intention behind the session, behind every single set. He wasn't being lackadaisical. Many of us would be on our phone, would be too busy socializing, and this impairs the quality of the overall training, with which we're gonna talk about, as well as the RPE, how much effort you can give to any particular set. In this case, the top set. Everything was focused towards that one particular event. And if you think about it like this, for most of us, it does not matter if you're training for strength, for hypertrophy, whatever your goal is, ask yourself a simple question. Would you say the quality of your training is as high at the end of the set as it was at the beginning? Or like the vast majority of people, it dips because it's hard to stay that motivated, right? Maybe you got the caffeine in you, you got your tunes playing, all sorts of things. But after the first hour, hour and a half, maybe two hour mark, our performance will start to suffer. So if we're not conscious of this, the effort that we apply between every single set, the warm-ups, the rest in between, we're actually jeopardizing the quality of the latter half of our workout. So that's the first immediately obvious thing. But the second thing that I kind of noted before, we talk about, you know, physical preparedness. So your body's ability to lift the weight, right? Have you been training effectively? Uh, have you warmed up? How does the body feel? But we don't talk about mental preparedness. What I observed when I was there, every single time they were lifting, they were lifting. They had a little bit of fun. There's a little bit of filming going on, but they're calling out their warm-up sets. They're focusing on the weight. They're executing said weight, and they're moving on to the next set. When you contrast that to most people, the way that they train, there's an element of being performative, right? Was I exerting myself? Was I making faces? Was there a grimace on my face? This dude hit his 950 pound top set and he said nothing. Now I'm not saying you don't have to say anything. Maybe you want to yell before you do your top set and that is your prerogative. That is completely up to you. But what I'm saying is that he was so focused on what he was doing, the task at hand, which was hitting a top set, a mammoth top set, that he had no time for any trivial other outside consequences, which would potentially impair the performance. I think sometimes we get caught up right on social media. We wanna make sure we're trying hard enough. We wanna make sure that we're selling, that we're putting in the work. But real work is kind of done in silence like this, right? Where it's just people lifting, they're doing the damn thing. They're very focused, they're very methodical is another word that I would use. And so the quality of the training remains high. I think people focus too much on how difficult a session is as opposed to whether or not it was effective and how focused you were. You can take any weight to failure. That's not difficult to do. What is far more difficult to execute is to master what you're attempting to do, the squat, the deadlift, the bench, or even if you're not a powerlifter, if you're a bodybuilder, it's how focused you are when you're actually performing the movement. And that's why I do think things like RP, RIR, reps in reserve 
are very useful tools for people to use in order to log their workouts. If you put this amount of detail into your training, the mental preparedness aspect that goes into it, how focused you are, you'll notice that you could perform better. We have a psychiatrist, we have a hypnotherapist, and we got it to a point that when I walked up to the 500 kilo, I was lifting a car off of my kids. And that's the only way I was able to do that lift. Quality of training, as opposed to that ephemeral concept of the difficulty of the training, because I've observed many a people that will oversell how difficult something is rather than simply apply themselves. When we talk about the idea of warming up, we talk the, about the idea of density, how much work we can accomplish in a particular period of time. This is what we're talking about. And we can learn from high level athletes when they execute these things, what actually tends to happen, which is they come in with a plan, they know what they're gonna do, they execute it, and then they get the hell out of there. So their enjoyment of the session also remains high. They're not dozing off, you know, two, three hours, they have a session, and then they're, they overstay their welcome, and they're not as focused in terms of what they do. They're in it to win it. So I had that opportunity, the privilege of training with some of the world's best, and it's always refreshing to see people at the highest level execute what they do. So keep that in mind for your sessions. Quality of training is an underrated aspect, which is tethered to mental preparedness, physical preparedness, what your plan is, and then executing it. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video. Also, make sure to check out the Oliveris Brothers. They have a YouTube channel, Iron Theory, where they're posting content. You should definitely check it out. Rumor has it also that Jesus just became a RASP athlete, so you should check out his IG to see what you can use for discount code. Anyways, I gotta get out of here. Thank you so much for watching another video, and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace. <laughs>